Ben, please check. Baba should be in now. It's already. Please look for Professor Banji Akintoye and let him straight in. We must start now. The show must begin. Baba, the, the, the name is not in. I'm surprised. Uh, could someone please confirm what name Baba has logged in on? Because the host is not able to locate Baba. I don't know if Baba can hear me and send a message. Is entering as Professor Banji Akintoye, I believe. So please, Ben, check Professor Banji Akintoye. It's two minutes past eight. We need to start. Please bear with us. Once we locate Prof, then we will start immediately. Thank you all. We can see so many friends from all over the world joining us now. We are now live on Zoom, on Facebook, on Instagram. So, but we are waiting for Professor Banji Akintwe to join us. If Baba can hear me, he should please indicate so we can know he is in. Thank you all for your patience. I'm sure Baba will be li live any moment from now and then we will know what to do. Bros Kayode, can you please check with Baba again? Mandy, can you please try and reach out to Baba so that we can know under what name is joining us tonight. Yeah, Baba said he was in earlier on, but we didn't recognize his handle. So that is why we are having this difficulty now. I'm sure he's... In Baba is a very efficient man, so he wouldn't keep us waiting. So, but now it's an identity issue. We don't know the name is using. If it's Professor Banji Akitoye by now, the host should have identified him and uh, we would have brought him in. I'm in touch with someone who should know, and uh, he is using Stephen Banji Akintoye. So, Ben, look for Stephen Banji Akintoye. So, don't look for Professor. Maybe that is what is confusing us. So, go under 
Stephen Banji Akintoye, please. Thank you and bring him in and let's start the show. Good evening, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate We can see how much everyone is interested in this special interview. And we want to thank Baba for his great work at his age. You know, it's incredible. I wonder where he gets that kind of energy from. So I pray to God to bless me with the same energy. What we are seeing is Stephen Akifenwa that is in. We, we are not seeing Stephen Akitoye. That's, is it? Wow. Mr. Coyote, if you can hear me, it's strange we cannot. Maybe, is he in the waiting room? Could he be in the waiting room, Ben? Ben says no, he's not in the waiting room. So where would he be then? Because I'm also searching, I'm a co-host here. Uh, Dr. Abati, could you also help us to check, please? Uh, it's very strange. Because Baba is definitely in somewhere. Oh, dear, and associate, Dayolumu, thank you. Uh, that's strange. I'm also searching frantically. Please, if anyone can see... Stephen Banji Akitoye, because I was looking for prof, but Baba decided to keep it simple. But I can't see. Yeah, I can see Stephen Akinfenwa iPad, but I can't see Baba. That's strange. Look all the way down. Then let's see. I've, I've gone all the way down. There must be a way. Is there any way Baba could send a message? Is there any way Baba could send a message to us to indicate that he's in already? Hello? Yes. Uh, uh, ben, Baba is saying he's in, but they are not letting him in. I don't understand. So what are you doing wrong, Ben? Baba says he's in, but they are not letting him in. I've asked if Baba is in the waiting room. He said no. He said he can't find him in the waiting room. So I can see everybody else but Baba. So what's, what's Ben? What are you doing? Ben, can you check the waiting room again, please? Time, time is gone. I've checked everywhere, I can't see. Definitely Baba is not showing here because I also have access to the same. So I don't know why we are not able to see him. It's very strange. Okay. Okay. I think they've located him now.
So if you have located him, please highlight him immediately. There is no more time to waste. Then. Baba, please kindly turn on your video. Uh, your video is not on. If you press the video on your phone or your laptop, sir. Baba, if you can hear me, kindly turn on your video so that we can pick out your face. And then, then try to unmute him. Is he on audio now? Baba, good evening, sir. If you can hear me, please respond, Baba. The audio and the and the video are off. Could Baba please log in the audio and the video? Wow, already we have 235 participants. Thank you all. Thank you for joining us. And more people are joining. It's a, it's a big night. On, on Facebook, we already have 478 right now. On Instagram, 162. So it's a very big night. The world wants to listen to what Baba has to say. Baba, please, if you can turn on your video and your audio, that's all we're waiting for. Thanks to all for your patience. Thanks so much for your patience. Mazi is okay. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Well, more and more people are joining. If Baba can hear me, Baba should please turn on the video and uh, and the audio. The buttons should be should be visible in all. Uh, Mr. Kayode, please, I think you have to assist again. As I said, please bear with us. You know, this is new technology. Baba has even done very well uh, catching on with uh, the latest technology. Wow. Everybody is waiting on Facebook, 545 people on Facebook already. Hello, are you hearing me now? Ah, Daddy, I can hear that powerful voice already. I can hear that powerful voice. Good, good evening, Daddy. So it's for us to see your face now, sir. Yeah, it's your face we are waiting I said we are waiting for your video we can hear your voice loud and clear but we need your video daddy okay my video should be on by now Ben please confirm uh, you see your camera is still blank, sir. If you press on the video icon, it should, it should bring you on, I believe. Okay, while we await the video, I think we should, uh, uh, while we try to roast the dog, we can still make do with some popcorns 
and grandmoms. So we'll be awaiting the video from Baba, but your voice is what is needed most at this time, sir. So thank you and welcome. Uh, Baba, can you hear me, please? If I can hear your voice again, then we can start. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. If we can't get the video, we will make do with the audio, sir. Baba is muted again. Uh, can Baba please unmute? So let's go for the audio. Ben, are you not able to unmute Baba? Yes, we can hear you, sir. So uh, don't worry, sir. If we can't get the, the video, we will make do with the audio. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, sir. So if you can speak closer to the microphone, that will be fantastic, sir. Because everyone wants to pick every word, every grain of your word tonight, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Uh, before we start the questions, we are going to do a brief introduction and I have invited a good friend and brother of mine who is also a scholar uh, to do the introduction. So it gives me the honor and privilege to invite Dr. Ruben Abati, uh, one of the brightest journalists that we have in Nigeria and uh, he will now be doing an introduction for us, then we'll play a music, and then we'll start the question and answer. So, Dr. Ruben Abati, PhD, please step forward. Well, good evening, uh, OD. Uh, good evening, uh, Professor Akito Ekalesa. And good evening, everyone. And uh, let me thank Bob D for the uh, privilege, opportunity uh, to say a few words. Uh, given the time constraints that we're dealing with, I'll try to be very brief. But first, uh, 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 Momodu, let me thank you for, you know, having this platform. I know it's a leadership and governance series ahead of your 61st birthday, How Time Flies. Uh, you've chosen this year to celebrate your 61st birthday uh, in this manner. And I think it's a great opportunity for all of us uh, coming uh, to discuss uh, issues of interest to all of us as Nigerians and as members of an international community. And you could not have chosen a better person, uh, you know, to uh, kick it off, uh, Professor Stephen Kinto. Many of us who are on this platform probably know him as Baba Dua. Uh, you know, you know him as president of the Yoruba World Congress. You probably know him as the man uh, that took uh, uh, the Yoruba race, uh, you know, yeah, to get admitted into the unrepresented issues and people's organization, UNTO, uh, sometime last year, making, uh, you know, the Yoruba Nation the 45th member of the uh, UNTO, which is a group uh, that uh, promotes self equality, justice, values that are very important uh, to professors in Adiba Akitoye. You also probably also know him as uh, Alano, as he was known for many years, uh, that is a pathfinder. And he's been a pathfinder, one of the most distinguished persons we have in this country, in academia, in scholarship, in public place, and also in community uh, uh, leadership. You probably also know him as uh, the president of Ilanomo Ududua, uh, which is uh, the major platform where he leads the uh, battle, the struggle, uh, the war uh, for self-determination uh, by the Yoruba peoples. Uh, inside uh, Nigeria. But the uh, interesting thing about Professor uh, uh, Akitoye is that he's essentially a patriot. He's one of those persons who I think is guided by the philosophy that if you make change, peaceful change impossible, then you make revolution inevitable. He's a patriot who believes in Nigeria, who wants a new way forward for Nigeria. But, you know, he's concerned even at 86. He was born in 1935 about the contradictions 
uh, in Nigeria. And at the moment, it says that, well, uh, the time for Yoruba redemption has come. If it is not bring Nigeria to restructure Nigeria along the lines of a, a decentralized union, along the lines of equity, justice, and progress, then, of course, the Yoruba people also have a right to insist on self-determination. And I'm sure that we're going to hear a lot about that uh, uh, today. As I said earlier, uh, very briefly, Uh, we're not hearing you again, Doctor. Oh, okay, but I can hear you. Yes, the, that, last, that, that last oh, no. bit. Yes, can you take it again, please? Okay, I, I, I said Prof is a product of a Christ school. I do it. 1951 to 1955. And then 1956 to 1961, it was from the University College uh, Ibar, where he got to be in history. And then from 1963 to 1966, he obtained his PhD uh, in history also. Uh, by 1974, uh, he had, at the age of uh, 39, he had become a professor. And for five decades, he distinguished himself teaching in various universities, writing academic papers, and you know, uh, both in the United States and also here in Nigeria. And of course, uh, he, he, he took a teaching appointment at the Opafina Ulawa University, one of the early teachers in that place. He was a pioneer uh, hall master of uh, Fajui Hall, the first male hostel at the Opafina Ulawa University. In the Second Republic, he served as a senator of the Federal Republic. He was also later, uh, you know, a commissioner for health, very briefly, uh, you know, those things. So his entire life, he has been involved in the business of service. And even at 86 years, it is impressive to see his resilience, his commitment, the energy, the honesty, the forthrightness that he brings to every task uh, to which he puts his hand. So we're truly privileged today to have a distinguished scholar, a distinguished uh, member of our community, a patriot, a man who believes in progress and justice uh, as our guest. That's the man we have here. And I think that uh, we have a double uh, privilege today. Uh, Professor Akito, he spent uh, uh, many years as a teacher at Obafemna Ulawa University. Uh, in fact, he was one of the first persons to take residence in that uh, campus uh, when uh, it was, a, uh, it was uh, commissioned as the new campus in 1967. You know, and he went on to become the university orator and he's uh, the first person to write a history of that university, uh, if a university in 1962 uh, to uh, 72. Two of his books are classics uh, in Yoruba history. The History of the Yoruba People, a Revolution and Politics in Yoruba Land, uh, 1830 to 1856. So, uh, Professor Stephen Panji Akintoni, I said we have a double privilege because our host, Basho uh, Rodele uh, Momodu, it's also a product of Obafemi Awolowo University. So this is a question of teacher and student interacting. And with the rest of us who are all children of Professor Akintoye uh, being part of this uh, very important conversation about the future of Nigeria, about governance and politics in Nigeria. And of course, we're likely to listen to a lot of history because our guest is a distinguished historian. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ruben Abati. I knew you were going to do justice to that introduction, and I want to thank you so much, uh, most sincerely. Thank you so much uh, for your contribution. Uh, so, Mr. Ben, before we invite Baba to speak, let's play an anthem that every Yoruba man loves to hear right now. I love it. It's so beautiful. So please give it to us, Ben.
Trust me, that is an incredible composition. That's an incredible composition. Uh, so, Baba, uh, good evening, Daddy. Moyika Otun, Moyika Osi, Mojuba Agba, Mojuba Omode, Eshe Kupo, Akwe Ejewa. The first question I would like to ask Prof is, you are nearer 90 than 80. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you still in the struggle? Why are you still in the trenches, sir? Yeah, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's a life orientation. I cannot see evil and just pass, go pass by it. I cannot see people suffering. I just ignore them. I cannot hear the noise of agony and pain and behave as if I'm not hearing. I was born and raised like that. And then I had, uh, because my grandfather, my grandfather who was a warrior in the 19th century and gave most of his life to defending his own little kingdom in the kitchen. Uh, he was famous for one thing that he used to, that he had. He used to say, ah, I ran in a of those things. Hmm. One self is too little to serve. The self is too little to serve. Hmm. And then part of only one has added the question, does any star in the sky make light for itself alone? Mm. Does any power in the sky make mm. light? That's it. I was raised in the shadow of that kind of thing. My grandfather died about seven years before I was born. And, uh, but his aura, his uh, effulgence filled our lives uh, because he was such a great servant of his people. That one, but then I grew up and went to university college. I was not particularly interested in, in, in partisan politics as a young man. But when I got to Ibada, uh, I became uh, clearly more aware of a man called Chief of Afemi Awulawa, who was the premier of our region. And so in 1959, I and a few others joined together to create the Action Group Student Union, uh, Students Association. And that brought us into the presence of Chief Aulowo in the uh, uh, party launch. Because we were, as leaders of that association, uh, admitted to membership of the regional executive of the Action uh, And then I graduated and went to, back to Adwekit to teach in Christ School. And I found that uh, my hometown, Adwekiti, the largest town in it, was strongly, strongly another party. Yes, yes. And not action group. So my wife and I, who had educated ourselves in action group tenants as the members of the uh, uh, action group students association in Bad and went into work. And within a short time, we converted the whole of Adwekiti Roaring city for the action. Hello, sir. We can't hear you, sir. 
Hello, sir. Uh, the internet connection hello sir uh, in the 1962 the Christ hello sir your line is breaking sir your line is breaking Internet connection. Oh, wow. Has he been muted? Ben, can you check the Baba? Is not muted, please. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm on here. Okay, sir. Please, uh, could you take the last uh, two minutes again, sir? Hello, sir. All right. Are you? Can you hear me now again? Yes, we can hear you now, sir. Thank you, Daddy. So we revived the Action Refuse Association in the height of the crisis in the West Side region in 1962 to 66. And I became the vice president of the Revived Action Refuse Association, which if I your first summary as our president. And, uh, and uh, we did a, a whole lot of things in the West Side region in those three years while I was a graduate student still a graduate student in Ibadan. Uh, the crisis ended with the coup of January 1966, and I was able to go back to my studies. I completed my studies, and uh, then Chief Aula was released. I was one of the first persons to welcome him back. Hmm. And, uh, and then he served in the Gawan government and came back. And now here is when I really became uh, uh, involved in serious politics because he came to effect and told us Nigeria has seen the good days. We Nigerians have killed millions of our own countrymen. But Nigeria can start anew. And I propose that you come and join me, uh, join me in making Nigeria start anew. That's how we founded the Unity Party of Nigeria. Uh, most of the intellectual work for the Unity Party of Nigeria was done on the campus of Obafemi Awolowo University. Uh, I became chairman of some of the committees that were writing the position papers for the party. And ultimately, I wrote the manifesto of the party. Uh, and uh, without my asking for it, I was nominated to contest election to the Senate, and I won quite easily and became a senator. And I saw on the floor of the Senate Nigeria being very systematically torn apart with greed and corruption. Mm. Uh, I knew we were in bad time. I knew we were in very, very bad times. And I fear, I began to fear for the future of our country. Because under Chief Awolo, yes, when we were establishing the Unity Party of Nigeria, there was a great deal of enthusiasm for Nigeria. Uh, and I was one of the makers of that enthusiasm, at least on the campus of Obafemi Awolo University. We in Ife used to brag that what we were trying to do under Chief Awolo's leadership was to build Nigeria to become uh, the, the black man's world power of modern times. We knew we could. Papa used to say, gentlemen, if we win this election and we are allowed to serve Nigeria, you must all be prepared to work until it hurts. Until it hurts. We were ready to work until it hurts. And until Nigeria became a great country. But it didn't happen. And Nigeria then went 
on after that, uh, decade after decade, the military rule intensifies here and there by a few, a few years of uh, civilian rule uh, until uh, the disaster of the Abasha regime came. And uh, large numbers of our people began to flee abroad. I had left before that. I had left because I was sad. I didn't want, I used to say to my friends, I love Nigeria too much to see her die in my presence. Mm. I love Nigeria so much that I don't want her to die in my presence. Uh, so I left in 1990. <laughs> Huge crisis started in 1993. It became so bad that uh, it's a miracle that Nigeria survived in those times. And then at the end of it all, Somebody had the temerity to strap on Nigeria a constitution that arrogates almost all power in the country to the central government, and uh, that made it possible for an ethnic group that was untamed for it to become the ruler of Nigeria and to become the dictator to all Nigeria, and ultimately to think of conquering the rest of us by sending uh, the supposedly. Uh, uh, they were not hard men. These are not hard men. We have always had hard men. They have come usually quietly raising their cattle or take a little child. We used to play. We used to try and play with the cattle that the hard man was, uh, was rearing along the road to our farm. And the hard man was a, usually a nice man. We said, Look, you, you, you small boys. If the cow gets angry and begins to chase you, you cannot run as fast as the cow. And the cow is going to run over you. So you better run away and go to your father's farms. That was the kind of person that uh, the cow had was. He was not a violent person. He was not a destructive person. But the ones that have been sent since 2014 have been deliberately indoctrinated and armed to go and hurt people. Go and hurt the people of Nigeria. As servants of a philosophy that says that we fool and in, Allah has given us Nigeria uh, and all of Nigeria. And it is our duty to drive the people off their land and take the land. That's what we've been having. People call them herdsmen. But when I came and I've had, I found uh, people in the uh, affair ferry meetings talking endlessly about uh, this menace, I, I, I said, we need to find out what is happening. We don't know, know exactly what is happening. And so, fashion hunter, uh, leader, to first, so, and you do a research for us on this. I said, yes, I can. And I went out and did the research. I wrote a paper, I think 36 pages, uh, on the crisis in the Yoruba Southwest. I went all over Nigeria, trying to understand. And then I went to some other countries in Wessels, inside and outside Nigeria. I spoke to Fulani folks in, in places like uh, Yewa area in Yoruba land. And I spoke to Fulani folks in places like the Upper Senegal and uh, so on, in uh, in West Africa. And I found the following. Wow. That what the Nigerian government is now peddling around is that oh, 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 all of this is a product of the droughts and the drying and the, 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 in the north. Yes, they have been. Since the, the 1970s, and a lot of drying of the land, the foreign sand, the child has dried to less than one tenth of its original size. Uh, but that's not the when that happened, the Fulani, their cattle tried to steal it among the Fulani herdsmen. As of that point, what was needed was government intervention to help these poor folks 
government didn't help them. Neither the federal government, nor the regional, and uh, nor the state governments of the north stepped in to help them. On the contrary, what then happened? This is where the crisis is. What then happened is that some eminent persons among the food and the political elite then decided that this was an opportunity. This is terrible situation among the Fulani herdsmen is an opportunity to unleash them as warriors against the rest of Nigeria. That's where the trouble started. And so they were indoctrinated, heavily indoctrinated, to believe that God, Allah, has given Nigeria to the Fulani and that all that the Fulani needed was to, uh, to seize her by force. That's what we, we have been witnessing. Uh, one uh, Ali Ubuazos wrote in, I'm, and I'm quoting, he wrote in January 2020, 2014, Allah, through the British, eh, no, I'm sorry, in 1960, Allah, through the British, gave us Nigeria to rule and to do with as we please. We have been doing that since 1960, and we intend to continue. And if anybody tries to stop us, stop us, we shall kill, maim, destroy, and turn Nigeria into the bloodiest war zone in Africa. That's what they're doing. That is what they're doing, and that's what they're still claiming. And that's what they're still trying to achieve. I was uh, on the delegation that visited the governor of Benue State when uh, Fulani people killed large numbers of people on January 18, on January 1, 2018. The governor read to us a letter that they, Mr. Governor, I see that you and your people are mourning and they're carrying out mass burials. But what has happened to you is a little bit of what is coming to you. And your offense to us, before us, is that your, the ethnic groups in your state believe that the, the land on which they have lived for thousands of years is theirs because they have lived on it for thousands of years. That the land is not theirs. It belongs to us now, Fulani. Allah has given it to us. And we are going to take it by force. And we have accumulated the weapons and the money for the battle. And we are ready to keep fighting for hundreds of years if, it, if that's what it will take. And if you think, and we are not talking of the ethnic groups in your state alone, you know, we are talking of all ethnic groups in Nigeria the Yoruba, the Igbo, the Kanuri, the whatever. And uh, nothing can stop us. And if you think your federal government can defend you, you are deceiving yourself. So that is the atmosphere, that is the truth of the matter. Uh, the people who started the trouble, who carried out the indoctrination, who are financing and supporting the terrorists, uh, call it cattle herders uh, versus farmers. It is, that is not true. It's a blatant lie to hide a very, a very terrible truth. Uh, so, uh, when I came back to Nigeria, I was away for 25 years. I really didn't think I was going to come back to Nigeria. When I came back in 2015, I found our people in the midst of all this. That's when she fired uh, fashion and she asked me to write a, a report. And I went and did a research and write, uh, uh, to write a report. Uh, but uh, I wasn't going to do anything more than write a report. And uh, I went about giving lectures, which many people will remember, mostly telling the, trying to show the Yoruba people that historically you are a great nation. You are a great nation. You are not inferior to any nation in Europe. But at the time that most of Europe had no, was not urbanized, you were already heavily urbanized. I had big cities, walled cities, from in short, at short distances from one another all over your homeland. So you are not a small people. Uh, you are a great people. That was the kind of lecture I was giving around. And I guess that is what attracted it, how a crowd of young men, young men and women who then said, oh, we elect Professor Akintoe as leader. Uh, I accepted to serve with them and for them because I, how I had by then become very painfully aware about what was happening to our people. Our youth were in 
total, we are going through total disaster. Hmm. Go to university, polytechnic, whatever, pass out of, with degrees, sometimes very good degrees, and then walk around for years, 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 five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years without without any work. And uh, our young people were fleeing abroad. And there's many who are going to drug abuse, into crime, into cults, and so on and so forth. And many impatient ones believe that they could walk across the Sahara Desert to North Africa, somehow get some ride across the Mediterranean Sea and go to Northern Europe. And many of them were dying droves in the desert. Uh, at that point, I couldn't take it anymore. At that point, I couldn't take it anymore. That's when I came to the conclusion that what I had been helping people to advocate, which is restructuring of Nigeria, was no longer enough. That what was needed in the interest of humanity was that the Yoruba people should find, that should establish their self-determination peacefully, get out of Nigeria and go and take care of themselves the way they know how to build. For the Yoruba people are essentially a civilization building people. That's, that's the story. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for that uh, very, very, very serious summary of what has led you to your present state of mindset. Uh, will it be right to say you have totally, absolutely given up on Nigeria as a nation? Can you hear me, sir? It's uh, Nigeria is managing its in affairs in a totally disastrous and destructive manner. And there is no way a country that is being managed like that can survive. And uh, 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 Nigeria is one of the most endowed areas of the for many years now nigeria for many decades nigeria has been one of the leading producers of petroleum in the world nigeria has a whole lot of other minerals agricultural resources that are highly educated people and so on. but the, the resources have been so poorly managed but been so poorly managed with impunity with lack of ideas with with uh, with uh, with corruption and so on, that Nigeria has gone steadily down, 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 until now Nigeria is the home of, ex of extreme poverty in the world. Uh, you uh, 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 one United Nations uh, uh, agency said that uh, the worst place for a child to be born in, in the world is Nigeria. The worst place for a woman to get pregnant and, and try to have babies in the world is Nigeria. The worst place for uh, to, to, to do business in Africa is Nigeria. Because the rules and the impunity and the degradation of everything makes orderly business impossible. So Nigeria has become the home of charlatans and business frauds. No, no country can live like this. The United Nations uh, 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 assessment of, the, of Nigeria said two years ago, three years ago, uh, Nigeria is one of the poorest and most unequal countries in the world. Uh, and uh, many people are predicting that by, night, by 2030, not less than 50% of all the poorest people in the world will be Nigerians. Yeah, so it's, uh, that is, uh, uh, it is not a question of giving up on Nigeria, it's of accepting the reality and the truth. The truth is that Nigeria has ceased to be a viable country in the world. That's all. And I didn't want, uh, so I thought it becomes a duty of all of us to try and dissolve this, the Nigeria peacefully. And that's why I have championed 
the cause of Yoruba uh, self-determination uh, to be achieved peacefully in a law-abiding manner. Because we Yoruba are a, a great nation and a civilized nation, and we must not be contributing to to uh, to chaos. We don't want Nigeria to break up in chaos because that will lead to a lot of pain and suffering for a lot of people all over West Africa. So the answer is, let us dissolve this thing peacefully. We have tried, we have failed. Uh, let us accept that we have failed. Let us sit down and negotiate and dissolve it peacefully. That's my position. I have been asked by several international organizations, diplomats, you know, who read what we write. Some of us lament like the biblical Jeremiah. Every week we are writing. We don't know if anyone is reading and responding. And the question they all ask is, is it possible for Nigeria to break up peacefully? Sir, I want you to kindly tell us how you think those who are presently profiting from the madness going on in Nigeria would ever allow Nigeria to break up peacefully. And in a situation where it, that, that is not possible, what are the options before the Yoruba nation? The, the realities of the situation will force them to accept a backup. It's the solution. The country is going steadily down all the time. Yeah, that's the truth of it. That's it. The country is going steadily down. They may be stubborn now and say, no, no, no. But in a few months from now, if things go on the way they are going on now, more and more of them will accept that it is sensible to break up. One uh, uh, northern member of the, uh, not, uh, the Fulani had one uh, like the uh, uh, forgotten his name, his chairman of an organization called Kaduna Dialogue uh, Group, said even an Indian from heaven cannot unite Nigeria anymore the way it is. It is better to break up, he said, into smaller, smaller countries in the interest of humanity. In the interest of relations and in the interest of the future and our children. And if we do not do it now, he said, future generation will be cursing at us. That is, so it is not just southerners or middle belters alone who, who believe this. Uh, many, many people in the north are gradually bega beginning to believe. And a, a, a group of youth organizations in the north has now clearly demanding the solution of Nigeria so that Arewa can become a separate and independent country in the world. So it is not as solid as people may think. The solidity, the little solidity that is there is softening, whittling, whittling down all the time, day by day. We have now reached a situation in which the government of Nigeria announces Oh, we, federal government, we are not in charge of, uh, are not, it's not our duty to confront uh, banditry and raping and kidnapping. It's not our, uh, it's not our duty. It's not, a, those things are not a federal crime. They are not federal crimes. And the Nigerian police is not obliged to, to, to handle them. That's Nigerian federal government saying that. Yeah, this, the, there is no center anymore uh, at this point. There is no center anymore. So if people think that the people who are holding on to power now will be able to will be in a position to hold on to it in, a, in, in some months from now, they're deceiving themselves. Nigeria is self-destructing, that's all. And uh, those who are in charge of it, will learn the truth and accept the truth by a by. And I predict that they will do so very soon. Sir, just yesterday, there was another National Security Council meeting in Abuja. And some of those who attended were President Muhammad Buhari, Boz Mustafa, Ibrahim Gambari, Baba Gana Mongono, Abubakar Malami, Bashiri Sali Magashi, 
Ibrahim Atahiru, Awal Subiru, Usman Alkali Baba, Yusuf Magaji Bichi, Ahmed Rufai Abubakar. And in their communique, well, I saw the vice president in uh, a few of the pictures. Um, I don't know if anybody from the southeast or south south was at that meeting since uh, the Security there Council. Was none. Sir? There was none. Okay, there sir. There was none. The communique issue says there will be new security measures for southeast and south south. And they were not represented. Chief MK Wabela used to say, you cannot shave a man's head in his absence. So why do you think the South South and the South East, um, where we don't have terrorists, have become more of security concern than the places where the terrorists and bandits reside? You have, you, you said it yourself, Paul. Oh. You write out the list. It is all Northerners, with the exception of the Vice President. And there's nobody from the South, there's nobody from the South South. And yet, people presume to have the Nigerian National Security Council. No, it, it, it is no longer there. We must stop deceiving ourselves. We the educated people of Nigeria need to sit down and tell ourselves what we are doing essentially with Nigeria these days is romancing a corpse. There is nothing left. We need to, be, uh, we need to do our, uh, our, our people the duty of seeking substance, reality, rather than uh, talking of a thing that has passed that we are still rejoicing about. There is no Nigeria anymore. That's the truth of the matter. That's it. So, uh, 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 by and by, by and by, sooner than later, I believe, uh, even the people who are in control now will, will give up. We tell them, says, it's no use. It cannot be done. Sir, I know it's the wish of many people agitating for the Biafra nation, the Yoruba nation, and so on and so forth. It's the wish that something will happen and happen very quickly. If it does not happen, and by 2023, Buhari decides to hand over power to the next government, whether from the north or wherever, people, in fact, the two mainstream parties are already speaking of zooming you know the presidency to the north whether north east or northwest what do you think you and those who believe in your cause will do i know that baba you are the banjo i said there will be no election but how do you enforce that you know the question people are asking is about enforceability how would you enforce it? That's number one. Number two, if majority of Yoruba people decide to go for elections, so what would be your position? Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Ben, can you check? Oh, Baba is muted again. What's going on? Ben, can you unmute? More with all the elections. Ben. More with all the elections on that day. Yes, sir. Hello, sir. The more we hold elections under the 1990 Constitution, the more we prolong our suffering, our pains. The Fulani marauders and terrorists are telling us that uh, they are Niger in the southern Nigeria, they are in Yoruba land, in Golan, in Yoruba everywhere, because the 
constitution as they are Nigerians and under the constitution of Nigeria they are free to be anywhere uh, so the more we hold the elections under the 1999 constitution the more we prolong our suffering I am absolutely confident that if it came to a referendum or some sort of vote the Yoruba people will say in a very large uh, majority that they don't want election in that in part of it. That is as simple as that. And the people in the East are saying the same, people in the Middle Belt are saying the same. And look at it. The South and the Middle Belt accounts for three quarters of the population of Nigeria. So this is not a question of a minority or a, a, ego, a small ego minority in Nigeria or a small Yoruba minority, only 20 something percent of Nigeria talking. It is 75 percent of Nigeria talking. And that's a very, very serious matter. Hmm. Sir, <coughs> this, sorry, sir. Bless you, sir. The issue of referendum. This was raised with me when I interviewed Mazin and the Kanu last year. We spoke extensively about it. Who will conduct this referendum? Who will supervise? In our kind of situation, yes, in our kind of situation, we will resort to. In our kind of situation, the, the most sensible thing is to resort to what other nationalities in the world have resorted to. There are many nationalities that are trying to uh, conduct their own referendum, like the Catalonians in Spain, like the Scots in Britain. In our kind of situation, we think it would be better to persuade the United Nations to come and run our own referendum, the way they did it in Sudan. I believe we can get that done. Do you think the United Nations can put pressure on a government as obstinate as the type that you have in most parts of Africa, including Nigeria. Oh. Hello, sir. Yeah, I didn't hear that question. Yeah, I, I will ask it again, sir. Do you think the United Nations can put pressure and ask the authority to intervene in the sovereignty of an independent country. Now, it, it, is, it is the pressure from the three quarters of the country that we put the pressure on the United Nations to intervene. The, federal, the people running the country may not want it. But the two thirds we put together such such amount of pressure in the world that a lot of people in the world will agree with them and that will translate to a vote on the uh, uh, in the United Nations that will authorize the United Nations to intervene in the Nigerian situation. Sir, I was involved in the June twelve struggle and I was relatively at least close to Chief Monsieur Dabiola. This was how we felt that the international community would be able to come to the rescue of Nigeria, help to revalidate the best election in Nigeria, and it never happened. So where are you getting the confidence from that the international community that does not consider Nigeria a priority right now, our oil is almost becoming, okay, go and drink it, if you, if you wish. So what will Maybe be... Maybe right that they do not... What will be the you incentive... Right in saying that they do not consider... You may be right in saying that they do not consider Nigeria a, a priority now, but the time will come soon when they will consider Nigeria a priority, I assure you. Well, maybe there are things that you are not able to say on the open forum. But I would like for you to tell us the process and procedure
towards self-determination. A lot of people have never experienced it, especially in our part of the world. So what will be the process and procedure that we should expect? The procedure that you should expect. Uh, we are setting up in a very strong way to put the hands of some important governments critically important members of the Security Council uh, in this matter. Uh, we, we might also be going to court over some parts of the struggle. Uh, all put together, we create a situation in which there will be no doubt that the United Nations needs to intervene. United Nations doesn't choose to intervene in any situation on its own. It is the situation that pressurizes the United Nations to intervene anyway. And so we are going to be using that knowledge very much. I'm sure you are aware, sir, that some Yoruba people, politicians, are already warming up for the next elections. Will it be correct to say you yes, are, you are aware, warming sir? Up, warming up for the next election. Yes, sir. Yeah, they are already warming up for the next election, and there's nothing equal in that. Good. But they will soon discover that they, they are going to hit a rock along the way. So, but don't you think, do you have a fallback option apart from the urban nation option? Is there any other option you are willing to go, to consider? have their own country in the interest of humanity so that they can bring uh, development, prosperity and happiness back to their people again. Uh, and I believe that it is the same type of thinking among the Igbo and among the peoples of the Middle Belt and the peoples of the South South. No, there is no conceivable option that will satisfy the humanity that we are seeking to serve. Okay, let's say theoretically you were to look at a Yoruba leader in the foreseeable future, either in Nigeria or in the Yoruba nation. What criteria would you be looking at in arriving at the new leadership that can propel Nigeria to the moon or propel yeah, uh, Nigeria or the Yoruba uh, nation because now, uh, yes as you very well know a situation creates some kind of leader uh, the kind of leader that will lead the Yoruba nation out of the morass and degradation and destruction of Nigeria back into uh, a modern, progressive, and prosperous country that we had briefly in the 1950s. Uh, the leadership will emerge. The leadership is emerging. Uh, and uh, it is not human beings who start by projecting this one is going to lead us, that guy, that one is going to lead us. Uh, the leadership will arrive. About that, I have no doubt at all. It is inevitable. It is the way history operates. There is no other way. The right type of leader will emerge. The right type of leaders will emerge. Many of those who oppose the idea of Yoruba nation are very quick to talk about the lack of unity among the Yoruba people. What do you say to that, sir? Yeah, I don't know what it means when they say lack of unity. But what the Yoruba demonstrates is that when there is an issue, there are many, many, many Yoruba people who want to venture their own opinion on it. That's the Yoruba way of life. That does not represent this unity. Uh, it is among the Yorubas that we say, Omadin Lokma, Ban Lokma, Lafida Lefe. When we say Lafida Lefe, we mean that's the basis upon which the Yoruba nation was created in the first place anyway. 
that even the youngest person and the old person has the duty of, uh, has the right to contribute their opinion, their own little wisdom. That's the way the Yoruba people operate. The fact that they are doing that now does not mean they are not united. It means they are doing what they are traditional uh, uh, capable of doing. But perhaps you don't know that for many, many millennia, the Yoruba people have been a very democratic people. We, for instance, Yoruba, or in all parts of the world, uh, where there are, there are monarchical governments, the king is automatically succeeded by his son, usually his first son. The Yoruba rejected that from the beginning. They rejected it. They said, we people, you are going to rule us. There is a royal family, no question. But it is we who will select one of you in the royal family to be our king. And that's the only one in the world. And uh, chieftaincy titles were domiciled in particular families in every city. And when the chief died, his son does not claim that he has a right to be to succeed his father. All members of the lineage, including the son of the man who had just died, had a right. And usually there will be a lot of wrangling and division into partisan groups supporting this and supporting that. There are large family meetings in the family compound until finally they decide on someone. That's the Yoruba way. We are very democratic people. Nobody can expect us now to stop being democratic. Listen, people don't know something about Chief Aula or something. You know, he built that, he built that, he built, you know, he gave us a great deal of uh, decent government. But do you know that Chief Aula once said to his party, we have no business trying to destroy the opposition. All we want to do is win the election. For, the, for our democracy to to be strong in our land, we must make sure that the opposition is strong so that we who are in government will be afraid of them. I, I, there is no, I, I, I don't know of any other African leader who will say anything like that. It's only a Yoruba man who will say anything like that. We are not trying to, we, are, we do not want to destroy the opposition. For democracy to remain strong in this place, we must keep this opposition strong so that we in the government will be afraid of them. And that's the Yoruba way. We are a democratic people. That does not mean we are disunited. I, I, I am often alarmed when I hear even some Yoruba person say, I what do you mean? And you know, because you is saying one thing, a guy is saying another thing, therefore I know you. What is needed is a proper system in which everybody can express their and have their opinion uh, uh, considered as, uh, for the decision of, uh, for the decision made. Oh, well, sir. The Western region was the only part of uh, Africa where, in the 1950s, the people who were uh, who were who were beginning to appear in this uh, limited self-government that was being uh, instituted all over Africa. That the Western region was the only part where there was never a complaint of region. Even a, a, a man like uh, Elijah Adel Adelboka, Adelabu, was a charismatic uh, politician at the time in the whole of the Western region, never attempted to use his charisma and his enormous influence at the region election. No, never. It was not, it's not part of us. So, uh, uh, so, People must know the type of people that the Yoruba are. There is no subject to put on the ground that many Yoruba voices will not be contending over. That does not mean that they are not united. Uh, listen, another uh, uh, story. In the 1850s, one American missionary traveled all over Yoruba land for four years. And then in the book that she wrote later, that were published in 1858. He wrote, Among us white people, what we consider as the best design of governor 
is the division of power, the balance of power, in order to ensure that no person will abuse power. So we, Europe, uh, we Europeans think that we started to do this in 1275 under King John at the Magna Carta. But now I have traveled in the land of these Yoruba people for four years and I have discovered to my surprise that these people have mastered the principle and the practice of balance of powers earlier than we Europe, Europeans and better than we Europeans. More than long before Magna Carta. So that that's who we are. We are a rigorously, fundamentally uh, democratic people. The democracy does not mean disunity. The Yoruba have also been accused of timidity, that we are not ready to fight for our rights, like I read in one of the Dio Fagunwa books, Gongoshu Edidare Botigboto Belu Goto, that a situation where people are not able to fight for their beliefs. You know, there are times you have to apply the carrot and the stick. Is it true that the Yoruba are always waiting for a miracle to happen? I'm not getting this question. Can you say it again? Okay, sir. In, in, in Dio Fagunwa, I'm sure every Yoruba person of my generation read Fagunwa. And there is this yeah. saying, Gongoshu, Edidare, Motigboto, Belugoto. That is, as wise as you are, you are also not so wise. It is, can you agree with those who say there is an ambiguity? about the Yoruba way of doing things? No, the Yoruba accepts the limitation of wisdom. No matter how old or experienced or wise or philosophical you are, uh, nobody has a, a, a total control of wisdom. So there is an old element of foolishness in everyone. Hmm. In uh, the Yoruba compendium of knowledge, called Obifa, uh, it says that uh, uh, we are all strong, but we are also all weak. That's the nature of man. Some people are wiser than the others, but nobody is wisest, and nobody is all wise. Mm. That's what Fatima was saying there. The Yoruba admit that in their conduct and that leads to a great deal of humility uh, so that the yoruba man who is very solid in the knowledge of the laws and traditions of his people is often a very very humble person because he knows that, that knowledge is not common uh, uh, Arumila is quoted as saying in one place, in one verse, you know, the far. Uh, people think that I am wise. I am, I am the wise one. But really not. Not really. Yes, I have some amount of wisdom, but I also recognize that there are things that I, 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 there are certain types of wisdom I don't have. And that God only, the Almighty Lord Dumari, is the only one who has all wisdom. Mm. Hello, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. So, well, we are getting to the close of it, uh, but there are still people who are sending in messages to me that they believe it's going to be almost impossible to achieve what you seek to achieve without a fight. How far 
are you willing to go? Well, uh, whether there will be a fight or not will depend not on the Yoruba people, but on the people who are ruling Nigeria. And if it comes to that, the Yoruba people will be ready. I will say more than that. Right now, we hear of bandits all over Yoruba land. Do you think our governors in particular, because uh, the situation where we keep saying federal government, federal government, I could see that Governor Sheima Kinde went somewhere and he said he, they are erecting CCTV cameras and think at least someone is thinking in a modern way. So do you think they on their part are doing enough to safeguard the lives of Yoruba people? The governors are handicapped when they have taken steps that everybody thought was reasonable and sensible. The federal government has intervened to make it impossible for them to, to carry out to carry to carry out their intention. For instance, look at Amateco. We citizens of the Southwest persuaded our governor to create Amateco. And it was to be a, a, a carefully chosen group of young people who are trained, well led, well guided, well commanded, so that their handling of the conflict with the Pulani marauders in the forest will be sophisticated, reasonable, humane. That's different from doing what we were doing before. All our young people go to the bush and defend your father's farms and so on and so on. That's what people are saying. But then we get, get to a point at which we say, wait a minute, we are Yoruba. All these young people who we, we took to school when they were kindergarten children and who have grown up now and become university graduates, some of them taking their degrees from the best, some of the best universities in the world. We are now telling them to go and run after full and name our others in the bush. Is that not foolish? So let's create a unit that is carefully selected, carefully trained, properly led, properly guided, properly co uh, yeah, 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 commanded, that will do the task for us. We created it. Our governors created it for us, and we were very grateful to them. But then the federal government stepped in immediately to make it impossible to, to do. So that's the thing. Uh, 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 that it, uh, a few weeks ago, Governor Akere Dolu said uh, all these uh, were full of them, uh, marauders who have uh, uh, ensconced themselves in the forest of, of uh, all those things to get out of there. But that's why they came out to kill, maim, destroy, kidnap, rape, and so on. And uh, the federal government immediately said, no, no, you cannot do that. You cannot do it by yourself. And uh, another member of the federal government said, no. Those people, full of the people who are in the bush, in the forest, are not under your control. You cannot command them, and so on. So that's the situation. We have a situation in which our governors are usually well-educated and accomplished human beings who know their people, who can rule their people well. But they cannot rule their people well in Nigeria. And that's one of the reasons we want to take our Europe back on our run from Nigeria. Sir, some pro Buhari people have accused you of being an alarmist. Uh, just today, there was a release that in which you said the new lockdown is not as a result of COVID, but because government wants to move arms and ammunition and all these things to southern part of Nigeria. Do you have any concrete intelligence or evidence of this, sir? We, are, we, are, we, we, we depend on precedents. In March last year, when the federal government announced a, a lockdown, there was a sudden upsurge of infiltration of Fulani youth into Ibrahim and into Ibrahim. 
So we are operating on the knowledge of what has happened before. We believe very strongly that what is being attempted again is to open the door for a major infiltration of, of northern military men uh, with sophisticated weapons into the south. That's, that's what the vast majority of Yoruba people Sir, there are too many scary rumors flying left, right, and center. Do you truly believe that the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and that is Major General Muhammadu Buhari, retired, would voluntarily set fire to a country he leads by supporting militants and bandits? I don't know what he will set fire to. I know that he has destroyed Nigeria. So you are not willing to give him the benefit of the doubt that maybe he's not aware of some of the things that are going on in Nigeria? No, I, I don't see that it is as a benefit of the doubt. If you meet President Buhari today, what would you tell him? I would tell him, Mr. President, we elected you to rule over all of us. You have not been ruling over all of us. You have been installing a, a, a Fulani government in Abu. And giving the Fulani control over every critical area of government. Moreover, your people, your people, your kings, have spread all over, killing, maiming, destroying, raping, and uh, uh, kidnapping. And you have not done anything to stop it. I believe that uh, uh, you have the influence, not only the power, the federal power, yeah, but also the, the ethnic influence. These are your own people. I've said that many times. These are your own people. If you had come out when this thing was starting, and people were shouting and crying, and you had come out and you said, listen, all these full and things uh, must stop. I am full and myself and I'm your, I'm your king's man. And I am and I'm the ruler of this country. I'm the president of this country. And I ask you now to stop. I believe that we, we would have got somewhere. Listen, I have often put it this way. But I suppose I had been Jack into a president of Nigeria as a Yoruba boy is pursuing whatever agenda, whatever philosophy, whatever goal, causing, uh, spreading all over Nigeria, killing, maiming, destroying, and so on. I, I, I don't have to, uh, I don't have to uh, plead my, my presidential power at all. I will plead, plead my kinship of, uh, my, uh, my kinship with these people. I tell them you cannot do it. And I believe that that will be sufficient to stop them in their tracks. I believe Barry could have done the same. He never did it. He kept shilly shallying around. For many months he kept quiet and did not. And finally he began to say ridiculous things. Like telling Governor Tom after Hundreds of his people had been killed. Eh, I go back and be, I'm going and be friends with them now. I'm going and be friends with your brothers. Your brothers? What type of thing is that? He went abroad and made the announcement. At the time when there was a lot of rumors swirling around that the Fulani had been asked to come to Nigeria and take over from all over West Africa. He went to a foreign country and made the announcement that all Africans were free to come to Nigeria without papers. Good goodness. And uh, uh, people want the rest of us to give him a benefit of the doubt. I think they are asking us to behave less than people. So, Nikita uh, uh, Khrushchev, former president of the Soviet Union, once said, Every living thing wants to live. Yeah, we are living things. We have a right to live, and we desire we desire to live. 
and somebody is uh, allowing his people to rampage over our land and kill us and so on and drive our farmers from the from the land and threaten us with starvation and you want us to give him a benefit of the doubt that's not fair that demand upon us is not fair at all what advice would you give you have the number two citizen in government right now, what advice would you give Professor Yemi Osibajo as a father figure? Yeah, there was a time when there was a lot of rumor that they were going to remove him or that he was going to get tired and resign. I was one of the people who said to him, stick in there, don't, don't resign. Let them remove you and then we shall see. And that's still my advice now. If you remain. Pardon? That it should remain in government. Yeah, that's what I said then, and that's what I say now. Remain there and let us see them remove it. And then there will be hell to pay. Hmm. Okay, I think we are getting close to the end, sir. I would also like you to be a prophet at this stage. What would be... I said I would want you to play the role of a prophet, sir, at this stage. What would be your prediction to the ambition, the presidential ambition of Yoruba people like Bola Ahmed Tinubu and others that we are hearing. At least I, I know that it seems Tinubu has already crossed the Rubicon. Yes, uh, in, in, in normal circumstances, I would easily support any of these, any of these Yoruba men who, who, who aspire to be president. I would gladly support them. I believe they are capable of that they can rule like uh, I uh, I followed very closely as Tinubu gathered the Yoruba political group together in 2013 to 14, uh, mobilized resources from uh, the southwest, and uh, created an alliance that won the presidency and the national assembly, and so on and so forth. Yeah, I I. Uh, I, I was uh, very, I appreciated his zeal and thoughts at the time. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I don't doubt in my mind that Tinubu or any of the younger men in the group would rule Nigeria very excellently. But the times are not normal. We Yoruba people have come to a point at which we are now saying we don't want election anymore in our land under the auspices of Nigeria. And that's a pity. But uh, uh, we hope that our leading political leaders will recognize that and respect the wish of their people. If they want to be a country, that will be a Yoruba country soon, and they could rule it. So that's the situation. Well, on this note, sir, uh, I would like to thank you most sincerely for agreeing to speak with me as uh, Dr. Ruben Abati said at the beginning. By the grace of God, I'll be 61 on Sunday, May 16, 2021. And I decided that Hello. there is no celebration. Happy, happy birthday. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, sir. Uh, you must send some of the cake to me, Nigeria. Oh, well, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm actually... <laughs> Uh, no, no, no problem, sir. <laughs> no, there will be no party, you know, as a reflection of the mood of the nation. So I decided I'm going to have some special interviews in the next uh, few days. Tomorrow we would have uh, Mr. Femi Fallon on SAN. On Friday we will have Dr. Olisa Agbakuba, SAN. Then on uh, Saturday, we have Senator Shehu Sonny, and uh, we have a lot of lineup coming in the next one week, by the grace of God, and we've just felt that our father uh, should speak to us, 
and uh, I will call on Dr. Ruben Abati to please help us conclude this session. I hope uh, Dr. Abati is on, on standby. Thank you, Daddy. May the good Lord continue Thank to you. preserve you for us, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Abati. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, sir. I will need to you. Thank you, sir. Dr. Ruben Abati, are you there? Ben, can you please let Dr. Abati in? Hello, Ben. If you are not able to get him, then please give us the Yoruba music again. Ben, please give us the music. Oh, okay. Are you still on? Are you still on? Okay. We'll, we'll, bring, we'll bring you in now. We'll bring you in. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Ruben Abati just informed me that he's still in, so Ben, please kindly bring him in, it's very important that we conclude this properly, because so that is the... Ruben, Ben, Ben, please readmit... Is in, he is in, he is there. I've just spoken to him, he's there. Search, please, search, please. It's search, he is there. Dr. Ruben, can you please uh, send a message? He is there. I just spoke to him. Dr. Abati, could you please? Send a message or raise up your hand or something. I saw him just now and I just, he just phoned me. Doctor, where are you? He was there just now. I wanted him to wrap it, wrap it up. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ruben. Thank you. Please go thank ahead. Thank you very much. Well, well on behalf of uh, every one of us uh, who participated on this, uh, I'd like to thank Wow, it's uh, the internet connection is bad. You hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Yes. I also congratulate you, uh, Bashonu Dele Momodu, 
uh, program. Uh, this is the first in a series on the terms and reaching experience of also part of this uh, process. Quickly, I think uh, you know I should not attempt to arise a minute in I think that there are takeaways uh, that all of us can focus on. One takeaway is what you kept finding as in your, your tradition about humility, about wisdom, about unity among your people, about the kind of philosophy, emphasizing Yoruba tradition, culture, and Yoruba standard, which I think is something that many young Yorubas these days do not seem to understand. Many young Yorubas who do not even want to listen to the other side. I was very happy when you don't agree, it's not a problem. Yoruba people, they have this intellectual culture. There's no assumption who would want you. So we are allowed, and I think that this kind of platform is a plan provides an opportunity for interaction and also uh, for, you know, uh, uh, intellection and also for reflection for the good of the people and also for the good of humanity, as he kept emphasizing. Second point has to do with the fact that at 86, and Bobby, that was where you started. You know, worrying about Nigeria. Oh, internet. This is segment. The internet. Uh, Doctor Abati, we are having difficulties hearing you. Oh my. Okay, oh my. we can hear you now. Please go on. Doctor Abati. Oh. I'm also saying there is a lesson we can learn from the example of uh, Professor Banja at 86. He's still fighting for the community. He's still fighting for the country. He's still thinking about the future. And that for us, you know, means that uh, 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 we should not give up. Nobody should give up. Somebody is telling me to turn off the audio, uh, the video. How do I do that now? No, I don't think that has anything to do with it. Don't worry. It's your internet. Just go on, please. Uh, please go on. That if I talk no, I don't, I don't okay. think so. But you can hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. No problem. Okay, so I was also talking about this example. The fact that at 86, he has not lost hope. The third major point, and I think we can also take away, is this point about self-determination. Well, everybody may not agree with it because he was saying, oh, we have to take our Yoruba nation and run away from Nigeria. Well, maybe there are other options. Maybe there are no options. But as I said in the introduction, uh, Professor Akitoye is uh, basically a patriot. He believes in the idea of Nigeria. You can see all those Awis principles. But you have a name, somebody who has said that Nigeria has failed to work. And if Nigeria has failed to work for the good of, uh, of the people of Nigeria, maybe it's better for the union to be decentralized. And I think that that is the point that we can continue to converse about. Fourth point, which I think is also an important uh, takeaway, is this disappointment with the president administration, the Buhari administration, and what he described as a full learning project, the full of Nigeria. I, I believe that it's possible to continue to have a conversation along those lines. And to raise one question, how come everybody has been president in this country, now we have the climax? And everybody, this is, uh, you know, a conversation uh, uh, that should be widely circulated on all platforms. And I believe that persons who did not join us uh, this evening would find a lot that they can get from it. And if it is possible to transcribe the full text and to circulate that full text, uh, you know, uh, widely uh, for the benefit of others who can uh, benefit uh, from the wisdom 
the, the insights of uh, Professor uh, uh, Banti Akitoyi. Once again, I would like to congratulate you both deep and to thank everyone who has been part of this and to thank Baba especially uh, for you know uh, staying with us past this uh, bedtime. We've all been uh, greatly enriched, um, you know, in fact. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ruben Abati. Let me conclude by saying I deliberately brought in Dr. Ruben Abati because I know his views. His views don't tally with that of Baba on this. And that should be the spirit. Everybody must have an opinion. What I seek to achieve is that I have seen the kind of intolerance, especially on social media platforms these days. Once you have a contrary opinion, then you are an enemy, you are a Satan. No. Everybody must. Chief Abiola taught me something. He said, everybody must have a say, but a few people will have their way. So, those who want the Yoruba nation, allow those who don't agree to have their say, and we will pray that God will give you your way. That's all. That, that's all. So, there is no reason for us to be fighting ourselves when you have bigger enemies out there. In fact, they will be so happy that see them or see them. They can't even agree. And I'm happy that Baba also explained it, that it is in our democratic nature for us to disagree. People disagree with Chifa Olawa. And Chifa Olawa was supposed to be, if you are looking for the greatest of the greatest, he was. People disagreed with him. So let us please practice democracy because we cannot replace one dictatorship with, with another. It is important that we all allow people to have their say while we have our way. Thank you, Dr. Ruben, for agreeing to do this job. When you were in government, you and I, we had fireworks, we exchanged fireworks, we fought, but we fought on principle. 